Hello everyone, Reza here. In this video, I will show you how to send emails directly from Power Apps. We will send nicely formatted email with rich HTML, add images, attachments, set the email properties dynamically, add signatures, add company branded images and logos, and a lot more. So let's check it out in action. To get started with sending emails from Power Apps, the easiest option is to look at an existing screen template that has been provided for us. For that, you will head over to New Screen and select Email. Upon selection, it will create a new screen based on the email screen template. This screen has options to plug in the two property for the email. You can search for people or add email addresses. You can define the subject and the body of the email. The moment you add the screen, it automatically creates a connection to Office 365 Outlook. And this screen has the send email icon on select of which it uses the Office 365 Outlook connectors send email function. However, there is a newer version of this function, which is send email v2. So I will recommend you to go ahead and use the v2 function. As part of the send email v2 function, we need to specify the following required parameters. The two property, this is a string of email addresses. If you're adding multiple email addresses, they need to be semicolon separated. Then we have the subject of the email. Then we have the body of the email, which can be in rich text format as well. And then we have additional properties that we can set. For example, the importance of the email, the sensitivity of the email, CC, BCC, and a lot more. Let's preview the app and test this out. In the two, I will search for an account from my active directory. The people picker option works. Additionally, I can also plug in email addresses and click on the plus icon. Then I can define the subject of my email and then the body of the email. Once I'm done with this, I will click on send. This will go ahead and send an email to the recipient, which in this case is Reza. Here is the subject of the email and the body of the email. There are additional properties that we can set related to the email apart from the importance. We can add attachments to the email. We can define the CC. This once again will be email addresses semicolon separated. We can define BCC, email address, semicolon separated, the sensitivity of the email, and then the from or the send as property. This is the email address to send mail from. This requires send as or send on behalf of permission for that mailbox. The body of the email can be in rich text format. The template adds a multi-line text control. So let's replace this with a rich text control. We'll head over to insert text and pick the rich text editor experience. I will reorder this control and send it to the back. And I will rename this control to RTE body. The default property, I will set it as empty. And for the send email action, where I was using the previous multi-line text box, I will replace that with the rich text editor controls, HTML text property. And I will also ensure that I reset the rich text editor control after the email is sent. Let's try this out. I'll enter the email and subject. And in the rich text editor control, I have all the rich text features that is available as part of the RTE editor in Power Apps. Once I add my mail body, I can go ahead and click send. Here is the email that I have received. The body of the email is in rich text format. I even added a link to the Outlook connector documentation. 
If I select that, it will lead me to the connector documentation page, which has all the information of that send email V2 action. Let's try and add an image in the body of the email. To do that, I will insert from the media controls, add picture. This control allows us to upload an image directly in Power Apps. For the send email action, where I was sending the body as HTML text, here I will additionally append simple HTML. I will add an image tag where the source I will get directly from that image control. Important to note, here I need the base64 encoded version of that image. So I can leverage the JSON function in Power Apps, point to that image controls image property, and then include the JSON format, which is JSON format dot include binary data to get the base64 encoded version. Let's try this out. I will upload an image and I will click on send. Here is the email that includes that image in the body of the mail. Now this embedded image as part of the body of the mail can also be the current user's profile image. And for that, once again, simple HTML, Using the image tag, the source here is user.image. There is also an image control in Power Apps. I've added that on the screen. In my app, I have added an image, and that image is what I will be referencing in that image control. To add that image control as well to the body of the email, once again, simple image tag and the same JSON function pointing to that image controls image property and then formatting the JSON to include binary data. Let's try this out. I will go ahead and send the email. Here's the email now that includes all of those images coming from the add picture control, the user's profile image and the image held in that image control. We can also embed in the body of the email the information held in the pen input control in Power Apps. The pen input control allows us to draw sketches or add signatures. This control as well exposes a property called image, and we can leverage that same concept of using the JSON function, pointing to the pen input controls image property, and then formatting it to include binary data. Let's try this out. Here I am adding my signature. And I'll click send. The email that I receive also includes that signature from the pen input control. Now, all of these images that I embedded in the body of the email, they can also be added as attachments to the email. To do that, I will leverage the attachments property. This expects tabular data, which needs two key parameters. One is the name of the attachment and then it requires the content bytes of that image and this I can directly get by leveraging the image controls image property. I will go ahead and format the text. Next, let's try and include the pen input control information as an attachment. Once again, same concept. I need the name and the content bytes. Let's try this out. I will go ahead and send the email. This time when I receive the email, it includes the images as attachments. Let's try and make the send email property dynamic by retrieving data from a data source. Here I have a SharePoint list that tracks expense reports. And one of the properties here is expense type. Based upon the expense type selection from the user, the approvers are dynamically assigned. Let's go ahead and create a very simple Power App directly from the SharePoint list. Give it a name, and this will create a standard three screen Power App connected to that SharePoint list. To send the email, I will head over to new screen and click blank. Here, I will add my header 
that states send email. I've added a text box control to allow the user to enter the subject of the email. And now I have entered a rich text editor control that will allow the user to enter rich text for the body of the email. And finally, I'm adding a button called send email so that when the user clicks on this, we can send the email. On my home screen, the gallery is getting its data from that SharePoint list. Here, I want to allow the user to send an email directly to the approvers of that specific expense item. To do that, I will first edit the gallery, go to icons and pick the mail icon. On select of this mail icon, I will navigate the user to my email screen. If I preview the app for the first item, if I select mail icon, it takes me to the send email screen. In the send email screen, I would like to load the data dynamically based on the selected item from my main gallery. So for the subject, the default property, I will leverage gallery expenses dot selected dot the title. So this will plug in the title of the selected expense item. For the body of the email, I can leverage other properties from the selected item of the gallery, like the start date. Here I'm leveraging string interpolation and power apps by leveraging that dollar symbol. So I've added the start date, entered a few line breaks, end date, line breaks, and then the amount of that expense item. And this is the app in action. From the home screen, when I select the mail icon for a specific item, it will take me to the send email screen and load the data for that item. Now the email needs to go out to the approvers and my approvers are dynamic based upon the expense type the user has selected. Approvers in my scenario is a multi select person type column. The label control expects text. So I will leverage the concat function to fetch the display name of the approvers and concatenate it with semicolon. So now the user can clearly see who this email is being sent out to. And for the send email button, when the user clicks on it, I would like to send the email. So first I will add a connection to Office 365 Outlook. And then on the on select function of send email, I will leverage Office 365 Outlook dot send email v2. The two property would be my approvers. I need their email addresses semicolon separated. Similar concept as before, I will leverage the concat function on my approvers column, fetch their emails and concatenate them with semicolon. For the subject of the email, I will leverage my text box control dot text. And for the body of the email, I will leverage the rich text editor controls HTML text property. Here, I will also specify the importance of this email. I will set it to high. After sending the email, I will send the user back to the home screen. Let's test this out. I will enter my subject, update my email body and click send email. This takes me back to the home screen. And if I look at the email that was sent out to the approvers, which is Reza and Sarah, here is the information, the title, the body, and the importance of the email. Next, let's try and add the ability for the user to send attachments to the email that is being sent out to the approvers as well. To do that, we need the attachments control. In this app, if you head over to the edit screen, there is the edit form that has an attachments data card. Within this data card, we have this attachments control. Go ahead and copy this. Go to your email screen and paste it in here. I will position this at the bottom. This attachments control was copied from a different screen. So there are certain properties here that are related to that screen. All we have to do is go to the formula bar for every error that's highlighted. Just clear the formulas. So border color cleared, items cleared, tooltip cleared, and then the display mode property cleared. Now, if I preview the app, 
I have this attachments control that allows me to upload files. So here I've added a PDF file. Additionally, I can also drag and drop files directly into this control. Now to send these files as attachments to the email that's going out. First step, I will rename this control to attach best practice. And now for the send email function, I will add the attachments property. I will point to the attachments control name, which is attach and then use dot attachments to fetch all the attachments within it. Now here there is an error that states that the formula is missing a column called content bytes that the attachments property expects. That information is already available in that attachment controls attachments property. However, the column is named differently. So all we have to do here is basically rename the column. So I will leverage the rename columns function and rename the value column to content bytes. Once I'm done with that, I will play the app, update my subject and send the email. This time when I receive the email, I will receive those attachments as well that were added as part of that attachments control. Now in SharePoint, we have the ability to add list item attachments and here users are adding expense reports. So they're adding the receipts related to that expense item directly as attachments. I will first remove that attachments control and then for the send email action, I will leverage my gallery of expenses dot selected dot attachments to get those list item attachments. Here as well, there is a column that we need to rename. This requires a name column. So here I will add another renamed column, which is renaming the display name to name. Now, if I run the app for expense for client, here are the details. I will click send email. The email will include the attachments coming directly from that SharePoint list item. There are many scenarios in which you would want to send formatted emails, emails that follow a specific brand. For example, I have a branded email that I received from TechSmith Camtasia, and I would like to leverage the HTML of this email so that when I send the email from Power Apps, it includes this entire HTML brand. In the Outlook email client, if I head over to actions for the email and go to other actions, I have an option here for view source. This will give me the entire HTML code of that email. I will copy that and also ensure that I replace all occurrences of double quotes with single quote. I will replace all, copy the entire HTML code, go to my Power Apps mail icons send email function. For the body of the email, I will plug in that entire HTML code in double quotes. If I would like to dynamically add data into this HTML, let's take the welcome message for example. In the HTML code, I will search for that text. That text is in this specific paragraph tag. I will remove it and here I will dynamically concatenate data. This data will come from my text box control. Let's try this out. I will enter my message and I will click send email. The email that I receive is formatted exactly based on that HTML. Plus the message that I entered is dynamically added in that HTML as well. There are various scenarios in which we want to add some company branded images or logos inside the email itself. To do that, we require the base 64 encoded version of the image. We have this nice free tool that's available on the web. All we have to do here is upload our image and it will then convert it into base 64. I can click on show code and copy to clipboard from the use an image elements tag. So I will copy to my clipboard here under the body tag. I will enter simple HTML image source and the source of the image would be that base 64 code that I copied from that tool. 
Let's test this out. I'll send the email. This time the email includes my branded header image. That's the base64 image. Here I have a help desk power app. On the home screen, I can filter the tickets based on their status. So I filtered here based on pending status and I would like to send an email report of the tickets that are in pending status. This takes me to the email screen. Right at the bottom, I can see all the report data. This data is placed in an HTML text control. Here I have leveraged simple HTML that includes a table. The data is coming dynamically from my gallery control dot all items. And since the HTML text property is of type string, gallery dot all items will return a collection of data. I have leveraged that concat function on all the items in that gallery. And then for each of those, I then fetch the data points, the ID, the title, priority, status of the ticket and more. Once I have that in play, I have leveraged that same email template so I can pick who I would like to send this email to and then click send. And here is the email that Reza receives, which has that formatted HTML table. Next, I have a leave request power app. The home screen displays all my leave requests and their current status. I have provided the ability here for the user to contact the approvers if the status is not approved. So let's take summer holidays as an example. Reza is the requester and the approvers are Sarah and Reza. So I would like to send them a note. I will click on the mail icon. Here I have leveraged a pop-up dialog to show that send email like behavior. User can enter the subject of the email. It already has dynamic information coming in from that selected item of my gallery, the request number, the title of the leave request and the dates. I will enter the note that I would like to send to my approvers, both of whom are dynamically being fetched. I will click on send and both those users will receive an email with the note that I entered. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.